The RPG-7 has been one of the most irreplaceable weapon systems for the last 60 years. Today, we cannot even imagine a minor clash without this reliable, popular, low-cost, simple and reasonably powerful shoulder-launched anti-tank rocket-propelled grenade launcher. It is everybody's favorite. Now, we are investigating the RPG-7, the 60-year enemy of the armor. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. To be notified of our new videos, please click the bell button. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all the likes, comments and shares. The RPG-7 drives its name from the initials of the Russian words Ruchnoi Prochiotankovi Granatamyot, meaning portable anti-tank grenade launcher. But fortuitously, the abbreviation RPG also refers to the rocket-propelled grenade in English. We cannot imagine a battle without the RPG-7, the most widely used anti-armor weapon in the world, including Hollywood movies. Even the super soldier John Rambo, who fought against the communists, couldn't help but pose with an RPG-7. Its story goes back to the Second World War. Of course, the Red Army quickly realized how effective was the German Panzerfaust against the armored vehicles. And in 1944, the Soviet engineers began to develop the RPG-1 based on this weapon. However, the USSR was dissatisfied with this first study and it started working on the RPG-2 in 1947. But in the early 1950s, the modern Western main battle tanks began to have thicker armor plates. Besides, the Soviet army now had many different anti-tank weapons such as the RPG-2, RKG-3 grenade, VG-45 rifle grenade, SPG-82 rocket launcher, and B-10 and B-11 recoilless gun. This diversity caused a logistical nightmare. So, in 1954, when the RPG-2 entered service, the Soviet army requested the development of a rocket-propelled grenade launcher capable of more accurate shooting at longer ranges. It would also replace all RPG-2, RKG-3, VG-45, SPG-82, B-10 and B-11. Developed as the answer to this demand, the RPG-7 won the competition over its rival RPG-4. The Soviet Army took the delivery of the first RPG-7s in 1961. It was a squad-level anti-tank weapon. During the first Cold War years, every squad in the Soviet motorized and airborne divisions had one RPG-7. The paratroopers used the RPG-7D, which could be broken into two parts for the easy carriage. During the last 60 years, many countries have produced under license or cloned the RPG-7. Its local production variants are named Model Tip 58 in Albania, ATGLL in Bulgaria, Type 69 in China, PG-7 in Egypt, Sagek in Iran, El Nasira in Iraq, MA-10 in Myanmar, AG-7 in Romania, Sinar in Sudan, PSRL-1 in the USA, and B-41 in Vietnam. The other known producers of the weapon are former Czechoslovakia, Georgia, Moldova, Nigeria, North Korea, Pakistan, Poland, Serbia, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Ukraine, and Uzbekistan. But we should add that the RPG-7 is also produced under the counter by many illegal groups. Also, the Armenian N2 multiple rocket launcher is one of the most notable local improvised variants. Besides, the Romanians developed the three-barrel variant of the RPG-7 called the AGI-3X40. The rear half of the tube has a wooden sheath to protect the gunner from the effect of heat or cold. The firing of the weapon is highly similar to rifles. The rocket is loaded from the front. The gunner needs only a 2-meter gap behind to fire the rocket. Under normal conditions, wind deflects the projectile onto its course. However, the RPG-7 grenade flies into the opposed direction due to its aerodynamics. So the accuracy is directly related to the gunner's skill to aim. The RPG-7 standard sight, PG-07, is a 2.5x optic with PSO-style eliminated reticule for low-light shooting and has no wind or leading adjustment. Right in the middle, there are stadia lines indicating a range. The gunner centers the full height of the target between the stadia lines. The target treads rest on the bottom line. Then the gunner reads the range on the upper stadia line where the top of the target touches it. 
The gunner should move the center of the sight reticule over the center of the target mass along the line of the measured range. If the crosswind is blowing from right to left, he should move the center reticule to the left of the target. Although this method works well on paper, in a 3 meters per second wind, the accuracy of the first round hits reduces more than 50% beyond 180 meters. The RPG-7 can also be fitted with the NSPU or NSP-2 night sights. In general use, the gunner uses the range stadia to estimate the target range beginning at the 1000 meter maximum stadia line and then begins the tracking at the 500 meter maximum sighting range. Tracking continues until the target reaches the double line at 300 meters and then the gunner pulls the trigger. A 300 meter distance reduces the reaction time for the target's evasive maneuvers or active protection systems. Still, according to the tests conducted in 1976 by the US Army, the RPG-7 has a success rate of 100% in 50 meters, 22% in 300 meters and 4% in 500 meters. The grenade is launched from the tube by the rocket engine's gunpowder booster charged with a muzzle velocity of 117 meters per second. The booster produces smoke of 0.9 to 1.2 meters in diameter, which would disperse in 8 seconds in low winds. After traveling a distance of 11 meters, the sustainer rocket ignites and boosts the rocket to a maximum velocity of around 300 meters per second. The propellant gases are released through six wedge-shaped lugs at the forward end of the tail boom, just below the rear end of the warhead to reduce backblast. After 14 seconds from the first shot, if the rocket missed or didn't destroy the target, the gunner fires the second one. The projectile automatically destructs itself if it didn't contact with a target within a range of 900 meters. Today, about 100 countries use the RPG-7. Also, it is an indispensable weapon for the irregular and guerrilla forces. The RPG-7 has a length of 0.95 meters and a diameter of 40 millimeters, while the diameter of the grenade is 85 millimeters. The weight of the launcher with the PGO-7 sight is 7 kilograms. The top speed of the 2.2 kilogram PG-7B rocket is 300 meters per second. Its effective range is 330 meters. The high-explosive anti-tank warhead of the PG-7V can penetrate 260mm steel armor. In general opinion, the PG-7V anti-tank rocket is relatively ineffective against infantry. However, combat records show that it can create shrapnels over a range of 150 meters once it detonates after hitting the target. Still, the effectiveness of the PG-7V is low against fortifications and sandbags. The RPG-7 can also fire many other rocket-propelled grenades. For example, the 2.6kg PG-7VL anti-tank rocket has a diameter of 93mm and it can penetrate over 500mm steel armor. The 4.5kg PG-7VR has a tandem high-explosive anti-tank warhead against a target supported with explosive reactive armor. It can penetrate over 750mm steel armor directly or 600mm steel armor with explosive reactive armor. The 2kg OG-7V with a fragmentation warhead is effective against the infantry. The TBG-7V with a thermobaric warhead has a weight of 4.5kg and a lethal radius of 10 meters. The RPG-7 was baptized with fire in the Vietnam War. During the 1968 Tet Offensive, it managed to destroy many US-built armored vehicles, including main battle tanks. The US reports addressed that the M48 patterns could stand against the RPG-2, but not the RPG-7. Also, the petrol engines of these tanks caused a catastrophic fire when they were hit. Also, the North Vietnamese forces used the RPG-7 not only as anti-tank weapon, but also as an anti-aircraft system. The Russian sources claim that it destroyed more than 150 air targets in Vietnam. In fact, while the RPG-7 was not very effective in shooting down a helicopter in the air, it became a dreadful threat for the air targets at low altitudes and slow speed. So, the Vietnamese doctrines did not include using the RPG-7 against helicopters in flight. In the 1973 Yom Kippur War, together with the AT-3 Sagar anti-tank guided missiles, the RPG-7 caused heavy losses to the Israeli armored forces, which were not ready for such a confrontation. After the war, Israel began to equip its tanks and armored vehicles with explosive reactive armor blocks and cage armors against these threats. Still, in the 1982 Lebanon War, the RPG-7s heavily hurt the Israeli armor. 
The solution was to create heavy armored personnel carriers based on the T-55 and Centurion tank chassis. The RPG-7 also fought against air targets in Africa alongside the land vehicles. At least 8 Rhodesian and South African SA-16 Alouette, SA-330 Puma and UH-1 helicopters were shot down or destroyed on the ground by the RPG-7. Interestingly, the RPG-7 also managed to shoot down a Rhodesian C-47 in 1977 and a Libyan C-130 transport aircraft in 1979. The RPG-7 weapon also fought against the USSR and Russia. In Afghanistan, it was one of the best companions of the Mujahideen. In countless ambush, the weapon destroyed numerous Soviet armor. And also, it managed to eliminate some Mi-6, Mi-8 and Mi-24s. Later, the Russians in both wars in Chechnya had to savor the bitter taste of their own product. In these wars, the Chechen guerrillas succeeded in destroying even modern main battle tanks by simultaneously firing 7 to 8 rockets. The weapon had 95% effectiveness over the BMP-1s and BMP-2s. Still, some Russian T-80BVs withstood up to 18 RPG-7 hits in these wars. The Chechens also developed unique tactics around this weapon. They organized four-person assault teams with one RPG-7 gunner, two machine gunners and one sniper with a Dragunov. According to this tactic, the ambush starts with the RPG-7 fire followed by the machine gunners who block the help from coming and do not allow escape from the burning vehicle. Meanwhile, the sniper eliminates the other vehicle's optics and communication systems. Nevertheless, the RPG-7 could not perform the same success against the British Challenger II. In 2006, the armor of a British tank serving in Iraq managed to survive 10 to 15 RPG attacks. Even so, the weapon was responsible for many other Allied losses. Hours are not enough to tell the war stories of the RPG-7. Let's close this bet by saying that this weapon is still doing an important work in Ukraine. Having been used in every major conflict since 1968 has made the RPG-7 an icon. The RPG-7 does not only serve during wartime. Military experts can determine the risk of war in a region judging by the black market price of the Kalashnikov rifle or the RPG-7. If prices increase arithmetically, it means that the parties are preparing for war. A geometrical increase is a sign of an imminent war. In a way, the RPG-7 is also the opposite symbol of peace. If your country does not have this weapon in its inventory, you can be sure that you are not at war or you are not a target of a terrorist group. The RPG-7 has been the weapon of all wars for nearly 60 years and it will continue to be in the future. Let's accept that no sensible commander can go to war or even a minor skirmish by ignoring the threat of the legendary RPG-7. Thanks for watching our video and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all the likes, comments and shares.